I built a working Rubik's Cube in Minecraft using chest redstone. This task ended up being way harder than I expected, with tons of challenges and roadblocks that I needed to face along the way. So allow me to take you on the journey of how I made this thing. But first, a bit about myself. I love Rubik's Cubes. In fact, I'm actually a speed cuber, meaning I've challenged myself to try and solve the cube as fast as possible. It is clear that I have a passion for this puzzle, and if it wasn't evident from the contents of this channel, I also have a passion for redstone. So I decided it would be a really fun project to make a Rubik's Cube using redstone. With my goal set, I got to work. But before building a Rubik's Cube in Minecraft, we should first take a look at the mechanics of an actual cube. The cube is comprised of three types of pieces. The center pieces which have one sticker, the edge pieces which have two stickers, and the corner pieces which have three stickers. Now take a look at what happens when I make a turn. Notice that the center stays in place, and all the corners and edges on that layer will rotate around the center. And therein lies the first challenge I faced. You can't actually rotate blocks in Minecraft. You can move stuff around, but the orientation of each block stays the same. So, in order to achieve this movement, I would need a block to represent not each piece on the cube, but each sticker. So, 9 blocks for the white face, 9 blocks for the blue face, and so on. This also meant that I would need two types of movement for each turn. The first type would be to move the stickers on a single face around the center. Second, I would need to move the stickers from one face to another. I started by tackling the first type of movement. Looking at the circular motion of the turn, my mind instantly went to piston fee tapes. But as soon as I tried this, I ran into a big problem. In order for a piston feed tape to function, it needs at least one gap. This gap gives the blocks room to cycle around. This is similar to how a tile puzzle has one empty space that you can move the tiles into. But take a look at this layout for a single face of the cube. There aren't any gaps, so how was I supposed to cycle the blocks around? At first I thought, okay, no problem, I'll just create a gap here. This allowed the piston feed tape to actually function, but in solving that problem, I created an even bigger problem. After I completed a turn, the blocks would become misaligned. This meant that in order to create the cube, I had to create a gapless piston feed tape. This is where I got stuck for a long time, and it was easily the biggest hurdle I had to face during this project. I tried a bunch of different ideas, but either they didn't work, or they were way too complex to fit into the cube. I was starting to think that the project was near impossible, so I stopped working on it for a while. After a month or so long break, I decided to give the Rubik's Cube another shot, and after a bunch more experimenting, I finally created a piston layout for a gapless feed tape that actually worked, and it turned out to be surprisingly simple. And here it is. So we start by activating this piston. What this will do is this will push this block out of bounds, but it will also create a gap here. Then we can push these blocks down, these blocks across. Then we can activate this lever. This will push these four blocks up, but it will also push this block up. Then when we deactivate this lever, it will pull this block back down. Now all we have to do is push this block back into place, and we've successfully cycled all the blocks around. The only drawback to this layout is that it only works in one direction, which would mean that on the final cube, each side would only be able to turn clockwise. But I decided that this was okay, since a counterclockwise turn can still be achieved by performing three clockwise turns, so I decided to go through with the design. Next, I began turning the layout into an actual circuit, and after several iterations, I managed to create a final circuit that I was really happy with. I think it looks really cool, and I managed to make it extremely small, with it being just one block wide and taking up an 8x8 area. I also made a face down version for the top and bottom faces of the cube. I placed the feet tapes in a cube shape, and I was feeling really good about how the project was progressing. Now it's on to the second type of movement, where it would have to move blocks from one face to the next. I once again decided to use piston feed tapes to achieve this. Since there are redstone components in the way, I built this circuit which will pull all the blocks onto a new layer so that they can be rotated. This layer will be for the second type of movement. And here is where I ran into another issue. 
In order for a normal piston feed tape to work, the four pistons have to have some way of communicating with each other. But if we look at these two pistons for example, the path between them is completely obscured by other circuits. But thankfully I had a fix for this. I found an old piston feed tape design by Crafty Masterman, where there isn't any wiring connecting the pistons, and instead, the pistons communicate with each other through the feed tape itself. Check it out! If we push this set of blocks, this observer will detect it and activate this piston. This piston will then push over the next set of blocks, which will be detected by this observer. This behavior will continue around the entire loop. It's a very clever design. An important thing to note about this design is that it has three gaps instead of the traditional one or two. I put the piston feed tape in place, and I don't know how I didn't see this coming, but I ran into the same problem I did with the first type of movement. Because of the gaps in the feed tape, the blocks would end up being misaligned. I got really worried when I realized this because I thought I needed another gapless piston feed tape to get this to work, but once again, there just wasn't enough room to do that. This problem stumped me for a while, but eventually I had an idea. Instead of another gapless feed tape, why don't I make a cornerless feed tape? This way, I could implement the special behavior from Crafty's design that allows the pistons to communicate with each other with no wiring in between. Thanks to my experience making the gapless feed tape, building a cornerless version was a lot easier, and I managed to create a working design fairly quickly. And here it is! As you can see, there are no corners, and if we hit this lever, all the blocks will cycle around. So the way this design works is we push a temporary block into one of the corners of the feed tape. We then push these blocks up, which will activate this piston, which will push these blocks across, activating this piston, which will activate this piston, which will push these blocks across and push the temporary block back into its place. And the movement of these blocks will also cause this sticky piston to spit out its block. And with that, we've cycled around all the blocks. I added six of these to the cube, one for each layer, and it all just barely fit. And thankfully, it worked! The blocks would no longer be misaligned after completing a turn. With that, the cube had all the functionality needed to perform any move, but I wasn't quite done. Right now, the Rubik's Cube isn't very user-friendly. If someone wanted to turn the white face, for example, they would first have to press this button four times to rotate the top face. Then they would have to pull in the four equatorial faces to the inner layer. Then they would have to press this button nine times to rotate the rest of the top layer. All of that just to complete a single turn. That is a lot to keep track of, so I wanted to create a circuit that would perform all of these steps automatically. And here it is! Since there wasn't enough room left in the cube, I decided to do this as an external circuit. Which did mean I had to string the cube up to a bunch of wires, but thankfully they aren't too obtrusive. This circuit looks pretty complicated, but the core concept behind it is actually quite simple. All it does is unlock the redstone lines that lead to the correct circuits in the cube. Then it will send the correct number of pulses to that circuit. The number of pulses is controlled by a clock, which is connected to this hopper timer. This hopper timer is a slightly modified version of SZ Petty's design, by the way. Finally, I did a bit of decorating by surrounding the cube with a glass shell. And with that, the contraption was complete. Check it out, we can now turn any layer by hitting one of these six buttons. If I wanted to turn the top layer, for instance, I could hit this button. Then the blocks on the top layer will begin moving around. And there we go, we've successfully turned the top layer. I love how it looks when it pushes all the blocks out once it's completed a turn. It's so satisfying. Now that I have a working Rubik's Cube in Minecraft, of course I have to solve it. So this ended up taking a really long time to solve, like almost 20 minutes. And that's not even including the times I messed up and had to start all over. So, my original plan for this part of the video was to solve the cube and explain what it was doing at the same time. But it ended up just being super hard to tell what was going on, so enjoy this time lapse instead. Thank you. 
And that is all I have for you today. This video took a long time to make, so if you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. And thank you so much for the recent support on this channel. We recently passed 1.5 thousand subs and I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.